Hello everyone, we will continue the topic, the concept of text tables and in the previous two videos, we covered why, why we require a text table whenever we want to store the text into multiple languages. We should never, never store into primary key table. There is a separate text table and in that we will store the text into multiple languages. Now what we will do, we will take a requirement and based upon that requirement, we will create the primary key table first and then we will create the corresponding text table for the same. Suppose there is a customer who has the, suppose there is a customer who has the chain in the various countries. Suppose the customer business is a supermarket business and customer has the chain in the various countries. Now what customer is saying, customer has the product IDs Product ID means product number. Suppose product number one, product number two, product number three, or we can say item numbers. Item number one, item number two, item number three. Suppose item number one is tea, item number two is coffee, item number three is milk. Now what customer is saying, yes, customer business is in multiple countries. So every country will not understand English. So what customer is saying, yes, they want a, they want a particular table where they will maintain the text into multiple languages. Suppose we are calling T in English. Suppose in German language, T will be called something else. In Japanese language, T will be called something else. So they will maintain the particular text and for that purpose, they want the table. Now, we were already discussed whenever we want to store the text into multiple languages, we will never, never, it is never recommended by SAP to store into primary key table. In the primary key table, we will only, only take the product IDs. Product ID means product number one, product number two, product number three. We will create a corresponding text table and we already covered in the text table. We will take the primary key of primary table means we will take the product ID or item ID. Definitely we need to take a language field. If we will not take a language field, how we will store the data into multiple language and then we will take a text field where we will maintain the corresponding text into multiple languages. So we will create two tables. One will be our primary key table and another will be text table. The text table will be totally, totally dependent on this particular primary key table. So what we will do, firstly, we will start with the creation of the primary key table. Now we already covered, if you want more clarity, you can simply refer the ABAP dictionary playlist. Whenever we want to create tables, the first thing we should always, always decide the number of data elements and domain how many domain and data elements we will create. We all know domain is all about the technical characteristics of field and column. And we all know technical characteristics means data type and length. Suppose we are saying, suppose item ID. Item ID is numeric type and it has a length of 10. So we will create one domain for item ID. Now we will go for our language. This is our second table. Firstly, we will take what are the various domains and data elements required for both the tables. Then we will go for the creation of the tables. 
Suppose item ID is numeric 10. So we will create one domain for item ID. Now I will come on to language. For language, we will not create any domain. We will use the SAP domain. SAP already provided a domain. We will simply, simply use that domain. Now, item ID, we are already created the creating the domain. So we will not go for anything for this. Now, suppose item description, suppose it is character 40. So we will create two domains, one for the item ID and another for the item description. The same to same domain, we will go for this also. And for language, we will use SAP domain. Now we will go for data elements, data elements. We all know data element is all about the description, description, how that field will be visible to the end user. Now we will create a data element for item ID. Yes, we will create for language. No, we will use SAP data element itself. Now item ID, item ID, same description. So we will not create a new data element. Now item description, we will create a new data element. So we will create two new data element, one for the item ID and one for the item description. So total, we will create two domains and two data element. One data element, one domain for item ID and one domain for item description. One data element for item ID, one data element for item description. For language, we will not create any no new domain and data element. We will simply, simply use SAP one. Now I will start with the creation of domains and data elements. Now I will go to SC11 transaction code. You all know you can create domain and data elements through SC11 transaction code. So I will choose firstly domain. Now we all know first letter should be Z and Y. So I will write Z item ID. Suppose I will write Z D to for domain item ID. I will go for create. I will simply give the short description item ID. Now item ID is numeric 10. So I will choose from the F4 help numeric. It is numeric 10. Now I will press enter and I will simply activate the domain. I will save it as a local object. So my first domain is ready. I will note down this domain. Now I will create next domain for item description. Suppose I will write DESC. I will create. I will give that description. Suppose I am saying item description. Item description is character 40. From the F4 help, I will choose character 40. Length is 40. I will press enter. If you will directly activate, it will do the syntax check save together. If you want to go for three individual process, it is your wish. You can save. You can save it as a local object. You can check the syntax. No inconsistency is found. Now you can activate. You can do all eight steps together with the help of activate. Activate will check everything. If there is syntax error is there, it will give you at that point of time. So our second domain is active. 
Now I will create two data elements. Now I will choose the third radio button data type ZDE. Item I. I will go for create. I will go for data element. This is for item. Now I will pass that domain which we created for item IP. This is the domain. Now the major purpose of data element is to provide the descriptions, is to provide the labels. Where we will give the label? In the field label. I will give item ID. Item ID, I will give same to same in all. Enter. Now I will directly activate. If I will directly activate, save syntax check and activation all will be together. I will save it as a local object. Done. So this is the data element for item ID. Now I will create another data element for item description. I will go for activate, create, so data element, item description. Now we already have that domain for item description, I will pass. Character 40 automatically appear. Now I will go to field label and I will pass the various field labels. Suppose item DSC. Here I will put full item description. I'll press enter and now I will activate this data at I will note down this data element. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we started with the practical part of text table. We took the requirement and in that requirement, we will go for two tables. One will be primary key table and another will be corresponding text table in which we will maintain the text into multiple languages. We decided what are the number of domains and data elements we will create. So we came on to the conclusion that we will create two domain and two data elements. With the help of SC11 transaction code, I created two domain and two data elements. Now in the next video, we will create the primary key table first. We will create the text table. We will assign the relationship between both of them. Then we will maintain that data into the tables. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.